Most of us spent the first part of this week hunkered down in front of the fireplace and radiator, but not everybody. There are some jobs that most of us really do not want to have in a week like this one has been. Think tow truck drivers, power company linemen, first responders. Uh, that has been true across the centuries, as a matter of fact, here on Delmarva. And it was certainly true 139 years ago this week when the surfmen of Ocean City found themselves trying to rescue stranded sailors in the teeth of a terrible storm. Guess who's with us this afternoon? Yes, it is Jim Duffy, author of Secrets of the Eastern Shore, here to tell us about the wreck of the schooner Sally Kay and the rescue operation that involved not just the crew of the life-saving station, but also local farmers and families as well. This sounds like a fascinating story, Jim. It's quite a tale of endurance and heroism by local people. So, so this, this Sally K ship is a small schooner. It's only got a crew of seven guys. Okay. Now, before um, you go farther, yeah. I, let me throw in here real quick. Uh, snow, fog, and wind were involved in this, which is what sounds like we just... It's ex yeah. It was very much like the storm storm this week. It was the biggest storm of the year, at least we hope right. this week's was yeah. the biggest storm. Okay, of so the sorry, year. I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. Um, so yeah, they were they were sailing from Baltimore to Boston, taking the long way down around uh, uh, the mouth of the bay. The storm got so bad that they the the sailors said later that their visibility was one ship length. That's all oh. that they could see. And they're out in the middle of the water, uh, six miles north of Ocean City, and bam, they run aground. Okay. And they can't get off. And they can't see anything. And they can't see a thing. But 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 they go lifeboat, right? They do sort of because they went to get that lifeboat. They went to put it in position, and just as they're getting ready to lower it down, a giant wave comes, tears it off of the tackles. The lifeboat goes sailing away. Okay, this is so they've got so so they've got they've got no option. They climb up into the rigging first of all, into the rigging off the mast. Okay. But the waves are lifting the entire ship up and pounding it down on the sand, lifting it up and pounding it down. And they're convinced, probably rightly, that the whole mast is going to fall over. So they climb back down okay. and they get out onto the jib boom near the, near, near on, the front the of the ship, onto the boom. They get out onto the boom, seven guys just hanging on to the boom while the waves destroy the ship underneath them. So they're there for like an hour, and then there's this brief little break in the storm, and they, they see a farmhouse okay. off in the distance. But then the storm clouds it up again, and they can't see it. But so that's their only hope, is that somebody sees them out there and alerts the surfmen to, to rescue okay. them. Yeah. So two hours, three hours. The farmer's name who had that house, his name is Howard. The newspapers don't give his last name, but he had a little boy. It turns out that the boy did, in fact, see the ship. They had to wait for, the, for low tide because the beaches were too flooded to make it passable. But once the low tide came, they started going six miles to Ocean City on foot to try and alert the life the the, the uh, life saving station there right. about the problem they get halfway there and the life saving station people are coming north the the keeper william west had seen also spied the ship yeah. and heard about it so in the meantime all these guys are still sitting they're still, on the they're boom they're still sitting on the boom and and it's uh, at the 3 hour point one of them decides that they have no hope unless he can swim to land and it was a german sailor named anton who dove into the sea and the other six guys are all up on the jib boom and they're watching anton try and try and try and try and it doesn't work oh. the undertow pulls him back out to the sea oh. so now they're sitting out there for over 4 hours Five hours, six hours, seven hours. It's still the wind and the snow. And meanwhile, the life the, the life saving people can't get there because the waves have cut so many gullies in the beach. But another local farmer shows up with a team of oxen and a wagon that helps them get their equipment through the thing. And they finally reach, uh, after eight hours, they finally reach. And now, now, are you familiar with the breaches, buoy, life-saving system? Like it's kind of like a, a, a zip line that they shoot yeah. out of the cannon, right? Right. And um, the first shot was a bullseye. 
Now, I still have a hard time, though, thinking about eight hours hanging on to a jib boom wrapped in a sail Wind, of somehow snow. having the physical dexterity to climb over and get in a little basket and then be zipped to land. But all six guys managed uh, to do that, and so they all, got back to, they all got back to land, but now, of course, they're still six miles away and they have to walk. The wagon that they had is full of equipment. So they start to walk, but then another local farmer shows up and he's got another wagon that can fit three guys. So they alternate after this eight hour ordeal out there hanging on the boom, they alternate the walking and resting and walking and resting. And they were, uh, you know, the medical staff at the, at the life-saving station when they finally got there said they were all near death, um, but some coffee and some food and some clothes. They spent two days at the station before they were all released to go back home. So all in all, it was a successful rescue except for the a, one. It was a successful rescue except for the one. The part that I like is how, how many local farmers and the came together. Yeah, they didn't hunker down in front of their fireplaces. They got out and helped and, and helped. brought out wagons and everything else. Jim Duffy, author of Secrets of the Eastern Shore, as always, thank you again for a tremendous story. Thank you. Great to be here.